I am the Kaiju no Kami, and tonight's review is Son of Godzilla. Ever a Horror of the Deep was the first movie that grounded Godzilla to an island rather than having him trample and battle through a city. This allowed for the movie to be produced at a smaller budget than done previously. The movie received mixed reviews, but was favorable at the box office thanks to its reduced budget, so Toho decided to try this formula again. Once again, Fukuda, Arakawa, and Sato were at the helm of its production, and they kept the setting on an island, only this time, they turned Godzilla from a walking weapon of mass destruction and into a parent. Thus giving birth to Son of Godzilla. The movie opens with a group of pilots flying a plane, and we come to learn that their radar is suffering from a high frequency of interference. In the process of trying to fix the situation, they nearly run into Godzilla and discover that he is headed to the source of the problem, a small island called Sojo. We are then taken to the island where a group of scientists are doing a routine checkup to prepare for an experiment. Their boss is a professor by the name of Kasumi, played by Tadao Takashima. They too start having their equipment suffer from the interference and soon a plane flies by and drops off a reporter by the name of Goro Maki, played by Akira Kubo. That night, a giant mantis appears just shortly after Goro was told he could stay as long as he helps out with the cooking and cleaning. The next day, Goro starts looking for some specialized parsley he was told about that is on the island when he comes across a woman swimming in the sea. She is played by Babari Maeda. He reports his findings to Kasumi, but everyone laughs him off. Kasumi soon explains to Goro the purpose of their mission on Sojo Island. It is to freeze the island. Their goal is to control the climate of any location in the world as a means to help solve world hunger. They begin the experiment the next day, but something goes awry thanks to the high frequency interference emerging at the wrong time. The experiment backfires, and the island is bombarded with thunderstorms of scolding hot temperatures. Four days pass before anyone is able to investigate the damage caused by the storm, and Goro is worried that the girl he saw was boiled alive. During their investigation, Goro and Kasumi come to discover that the big mantises are now gigantic due to all of the radiation from the storm. The mantises attack a mountain and uncover a giant egg which turns out to be the source of the disturbances. Back at the campsite, the woman Goro mentioned previously appears to steal some clothes. Another few days pass and the mantises, now Dean Komakaras by Goro, are still beating that egg. Scrambled eggs. <sighs> out of it hatches a baby Godzilla which the Komakarases start to poke and prod. Godzilla rises out of the sea and his suit is the same as the last movie. It actually... Oh my Godzilla! What the hell is that? His design just changed the moment he hit land. What is wrong with his face? Those eyes, those horrible yellow eyes. <sighs> those eyes are huge. Godzilla marches forth and faces down with the three Kamakuruses in order to save the baby. He easily slaughters two of them sure. while the third flies away. And like every typical male, he abandons the child in order for the woman to feed him. Except, like, this guy. Okay, so just like every typical animal male. Oh. I guess not. I've lost a baby! It's the worst thing I've ever done! Godzilla returns to pick his child up afterwards. Goro finds himself in a cave which turns out to be the woman's cave. Her name is Sayoko Matsumiya. She has been living on the island since she was a child as her father was an archaeologist studying on it. He takes her back to the camp and introduces her to everyone else. There, they decide to take their equipment to her cave as the camp has been compromised. More time passes and the baby Godzilla has grown up a bit. Lavish attention on me and entertain me. Seiko feeds him once more but Godzilla shows up and drags him away. <laughs> Psycho and Goro go out to retrieve a specialized red liquid that is able to cure them of their ailments. While there, they watch Godzilla train the baby how to breathe fire, but all he can do are rings of smoke, at least until Godzilla slams his foot on his tail. Man, this movie is just all about child abuse. Someone should call CPA on them. Godzilla then goes to sleep.
The red water is used to cure everyone, but a crazed Furukawa ends up shooting Kasumi in the arm. Seiko heads out to get some herbs to heal his wounds the next morning when she runs into the sole surviving Kamakuris. She calls for the baby to help her, which he does, but he is no match for the overpowering adult. Jerk. Their battle ends up waking up a giant spider known as Kumanga. Godzilla appears once more jerk. Jerk, 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 the Kamakuris leaves the battlefield. What a jerk. Goro rescues Seiko, but the duo find themselves trying to escape from Kumonga. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size. Fortunately, they are successful and make it back to the cave. Unfortunately, Kumonga follows them there and tries to attack them from within just as the radio is finally fixed. The baby Godzilla appears and starts to fight Kumonga, which causes the cave to start collapsing. This encourages Kasumi to decide to execute their experiment immediately in hopes that it will stop the rampaging monsters and allow them to escape the island. The baby Godzilla is encased in Kumonga's web as the last Kamakuris appears only to meet its end by Kumonga's stinger. Godzilla wakes up and rushes into battle in order to save his child once more. No really, he is rushing to the battlefield. Just look at how quick he is moving. The experiment is a success and the island starts to cool down so everyone prepares to leave it in hopes that the ship coming to their aid will reach them in time. Kumonga somehow manages to stab Godzilla in the eye with his stinger even though Godzilla towers over him and begins to snow. Soon, a blizzard emerges and Godzilla and his child roast Kumonga. Afterwards, they grab one another and prepare to hibernate. Uh, since when does Godzilla need to hibernate? I think both Godzilla Raids Again and King Kong vs. Godzilla clearly showed Godzilla can stand the cold and not have to sleep in it. Anyway, a submarine shows up and rescues Kasumi and his friends from the island and the movie ends. Well there you have it, that is Son of Godzilla, and as a whole, the movie is pretty enjoyable. The characters are some of the lesser developed ones in the franchise thus far, especially compared to the likes of Ryota, Glenn, and Shinto. Kasumi is really determined to make his experiment a success as he wants to solve world hunger, but what is his motivation? We do get to see that he does care for his crew, but outside of that, we know next to nothing about who he is. His crew is pretty much there just because he needed to have one, which is unfortunate. On the other hand, I can definitely sympathize with Furukawa for hating the heat, as I do too, but the man gets a little unbearable to deal with at times. We are also given very little to work with with both Goro and Seiko. Seiko is just there for happenstance, but she does very little outside of being a damsel in distress. Thankfully, she does seem to be a strong independent woman, as she would have to be to have lived on the island alone for seven years. Yet, how come it seems like Goro has to rescue her? What happened? Did meeting other people just suddenly make her weaker? As for Goro, he says he is there for his intuition in the story, but why? How did he learn about this? Like Kasumi, we don't know anything about what drives him to be this way. His characterization is one-dimensional, but at least he is a very likable guy. It is his desire to be there that does give him an identity, even if it is a shallow one. Sadly, there are no human antagonists around in the movie to help move the plot forward which does take away a little bit from the drama. The most we have in a villain is a feverish man with a gun. Not very exciting for those who like to have villains in their plot. It doesn't harm the movie at all, but it could have helped it a bit. The Godzilla suit is absolutely atrocious. The face is just butt-ass ugly. In fact, this is 1962 King Kong ugly. His eyes are huge, his snout is shorter than it was before, and that thick neck is just horrible. The suit looks way too big and bulky to the point where it looks like Godzilla is moving in slow motion when he is trying to save his son. It is also odd at how they had the 65 suit for the first bits of the movie and then suddenly just switched over to the new suit out of the blue. Did they just not think the audience would notice this? Was the suit too damaged to use and they did not realize it until they had started filming the movie? I just do not understand the reasoning behind it. And this is not the last time this will happen either, as we will see this occur a lot during the Heisei era. Minya, as he was named, looks fine. He is a little goofy, but he fits with the tone of the movie. I do like how he evolved from a really tiny baby into a little kid. It was done a little too quickly, 
but it works. I have no complaints here, and thankfully, he could have turned out looking a lot worse. I'm not so the Kamakura says look cool, but I do not understand how it took them days to crack open the egg. They were just weak opponents on all sides of the spectrum, and having the later one run away a few times before being killed was dumb. It really took away from the threat of it. Fortunately, Kumonga just looks downright awesome. You can definitely see the wires a lot of the time, but the amount of work that went into him was worth it. He seemed like a credible threat despite being just a spider. I just don't understand how he managed to hit Godzilla in the eye when Godzilla was standing straight up and he was lying on the ground. The effects for the most part are good, but not great. Arakawa returned from the previous movie and seemed he learned a lot. The island itself looks great, but you can clearly see the foes in the backdrop sky. Nevertheless, the work that went into Kamakuris' and Komanga was spectacular, but it is the battle with the snow that steals the show for me. It is just awesome and looks like it is actually snowing. Visually, it is impressive and watching the monsters battle in the snow like that adds a distinct feel to the fight. We have seen fights before on snow-covered terrain, but we have never watched the monsters actually duke it out in a storm. Santos scores a vast improvement over what he gave us last time as it feels like it belongs here. The battle theme is well done and gives the movie its own sense of identity. The theme song for Minya is charming and does a great job in portraying the innocence of his character. I also love the music played when the Kamakurises are on screen as it really fits their personas as well. Overall, Son of Godzilla may not be anywhere near my favorite Godzilla movies list, but Fukuda knew exactly the type of movie he wanted to make and he made it well. This is definitely a movie that can be enjoyed by both child and adult alike if given the right mindset. Well, once again, I must bid you farewell. Next time, I will return with the big epic, Destroy All Monsters. Bye. Isn't it time for a serious breakfast? This Tuesday, from 6 a.m. to 2, Denny's is giving a free Grand Slam to everyone in America.